the Lord. Greetings to you once again in the name of Yashua Hamashiach and uh, welcome you to this YouTube channel uh, for the Wednesday Bible study class. Today we have a new subject. Uh, the topic for today is uh, an high priest over the house of God. Uh, mentioned in Hebrew chapter 10, 21. The topic is an high priest over the house of God mentioned in Hebrew chapter 10, 21. Uh, in this we have two subtopics. The first one will be high priest Aaron. Second will be three ways of consecration uh, of the high priest. The third will be Yashua the high priest. So these are the three subtopics that we will see today. Uh, so before we could uh, go to the word, let's pray that God may give us wisdom to understand this word. So let's pray. Father in heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Almighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, the same yesterday, today and forever. We give all glory and honor, praise, dominion to thy name. Today as we are gathered to break that word, Lord, we pray that thou may enlighten us through the power of Holy Ghost. Give us Father's revelation. Give us the wisdom of God and help us to rightly divide the word of truth. That we may not speak our mind, but we may speak thy word that your great name be exalted, Lord. By all parts of darkness, none of those evil force may have power, that your great name be exalted, Lord. Thank you for hearing us, for we ask all these things in the blessed, sweet, holy, and exalted name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So today's topic is an high priest over the house of God. Last two weeks, we have seen about the armor of God. Also, we have seen the seven armors. Uh, all these things are very important for us. Today, we will see about a high priest over the house of God. So, the subtopic is the high priest Aaron. Uh, we will see some few scriptures uh, regarding it. Uh, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 says, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So God spoke to Moses in the Old Testament and uh, told him to make me a sanctuary. So it was for God that he said I may dwell among them. So that sanctuary is a place where uh, God dwells and uh, round about that sanctuary all the uh, Israelites were staying. And uh, God said, make me a sanctuary, a holy place that I may dwell among them. Now in that uh, sanctuary, which is also called a tabernacle. Now in Exodus chapter 28 verse 1, uh, God spoke to Moses again and said, Take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Itamar, Aaron's sons. So they were supposed to do the ministry in the priest's office. That's why God said you take them out from the children of Israel and uh, they will officiate or minister in the priest office. We will move to another scripture, Exodus chapter 28 verse 41. It says, Thou shalt put them upon Aaron. That means that is the holy garment that we will see next week uh, about the holy garment. So he says, Thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him. It says, Thou shalt anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them that they may minister unto me in the priest office. So here three things uh, was told. First is anoint them, second is consecrate them and third sanctify them. 
that they may minister unto me in the priest office now this word high priest uh, is mentioned 18 times in the book of hebrews in the new testament and out of it 12 times it is pertaining to the messiah 12 times it is pertaining to messiah so uh, in hebrews uh, you will see lot of things about high priest tabernacle and uh, the perfect tabernacle all the thing that you see in the book of hebrews all had beautiful revelation which god gave and paul wrote uh, all these things in the book of hebrews so this is all about the high priest aaron that i have told you that he was selected uh, in the tabernacle to uh, do the priest job to minister and for that uh, god has selected this family uh, to do the work of the lord so that's why uh, their uh, family was separated for the ministry and for the work of the lord so this is all about the high priest aaron now we'll move further and we'll see now uh, the three ways of consecration uh, or it is also called ordination before they are ordained or consecrated uh, for the priest office uh, three ways are there where they need to be consecrated we'll see that from the scriptures first thing is uh, they are supposed to be washed with water Uh, in Exodus chapter 29 verse 4 it says and Aaron and his sons thou shall bring them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water so the first uh, way of consecration is wash them with water this is very important uh, for a priest to be appointed uh, in the priest office first thing he should be uh, washed with water even in the new testament the church uh was also to be washed by the water that's what in ephesian chapter 526 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word so the church was also to be uh, sanctified by water now here priest was supposed to be sanctified by water that's why he says uh, wash them with water also it speaks about uh, the baptism which jesus christ himself had because he was also baptized you can read it in matthew chapter 3 verse 13 to 17 when you read it uh, jesus christ was washed uh, in the water means he was baptized in the water in the new testament uh, so you see that uh, what uh, god has done to aaron the same thing was also done to yashua hamashia so this is the first thing first way of consecration is wash them with water water is also the word of god and christ himself is the word but yet he was baptized by john the baptist uh, john the baptist never wanted to do so but jesus Christ said scripture has to be fulfilled and that's why you see that jesus christ was baptized so that is uh, uh, first way of consecration the second is anoint with oil this is the second way of consecration is anointing with oil so when we read exodus chapter 29 verse 7 it says then shall thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him so here you see uh, the priest the second way of consecration is by oil now oil also speaks about the holy spirit and that's why uh again when you read matthew chapter 3 13 to 17 when you read it uh you see that uh, when jesus christ was baptized uh the spirit of god from heaven descended upon him and uh, it was acknowledged that he is uh, the son of god you can read that scriptures you will come to know that the heaven has accepted the lord jesus christ and uh, as aaron was uh, anointed with oil here jesus christ was also anointed with the holy ghost and that's what you read in matthew chapter 3 13 to 17 so this is the second way because as aaron was the high priest uh, even masa is also the high priest in the new testament uh, so therefore this is the second way of anointing that is uh, with oil first is it is with water uh, that is the word of god second oil that is 
uh, that types the Holy Spirit. So this is the two things that we have seen. Now we'll move more forward uh, to the third way of consecration. Uh, in the third way, there is uh, two animal sacrifice, and uh, there are four offerings uh, that includes blood and bread. So these are the four sacrifices. Uh, sorry, four offerings to be done and two animal sacrifices. Uh, to get uh, uh, to the understanding of the scriptures, we will read the scripture in Exodus chapter 29. When you read verse 1 and 2, it says, And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them, to uh, hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock, that is for sac uh, animal sacrifice, and two rams. Two rams are, they are male sheep two rams without blemish and unleavened bread and cakes unleavened uh, tempered with oil and wafers unleavened anointed with oil of wheaten flour thou shalt make them so it should be made by wheat so these are the things one young bullock uh, that has to be sacrificed then two uh, rams that is two male sheep one for the burnt offering one for the consecration of Aaron. So that's where two rams. And then uh, there is also unleavened bread, uh, cakes, uh, unleavened tempered with oil and wafers, unleavened. This is all about bread. And it should be of wheat. That's what uh, the scripture says. Now we, when we go in detail, first is you see there is a bullock there. Now what bullock uh, speaks uh, in the Bible, it is basically uh, you see it is a service uh, that Messiah did in the New Testament because you see that everything uh, points out to the Messiah so that's why we need to understand that Jesus Christ as a servant he came uh, on this earth to serve and he was like a bullock uh, hard working that's why when we read the gospel of Mark that's the beauty of this great word when you read the uh, gospel of Mark uh, there are eight times uh, the word and uh, is the starting word in the uh, eight chapters. So when you take the book of Mark, when you see uh, eight chapters, if you go through it, the word and is written. And he went there and he did that. Uh, now this word and is a conjunction uh, joining two things. So all the time Jesus Christ was on the move and that's why it says and he went there and he did that and uh, uh, Yahshua the Messiah labored hard like a bullock, uh, like an ox to reach out the truth uh, through the teaching, preaching, healing and feeding. Through all these things he wanted to reach the truth to the people. Uh, that's why he was doing a service, he was like a bullock. Uh, doing the service. That's why uh, Bullock was sacrificed for the consecration of Aaron and that also show uh, the service of Messiah. Uh, as we move further we see uh, there are two rams. Uh, you read there. Uh, it is a male sheep. Uh, now in John chapter 1 29 it says Behold the Lamb of God uh, which taketh away the sins of the world. So the whole world irrespective of religion, caste, creed, uh, whatever background that you are. Jesus Christ is the only one who taketh away the sins of the world. Because he died and he rose again, that's why he is a living God. So therefore, uh, he is uh, the one who can take away the sins of the whole world, everybody, irrespective of religion, caste and creed. So that's why he uh, like a sheep, he was also sacrificed on the cross of Calvary for the sins and uncleanness of the whole world. So that is uh, what Ram speaks about. Uh, further, we have seen that they were supposed to use unleavened bread. Now this unleavened bread, it also speaks about in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8 says, Unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now sincerity and truth you can get only through the Messiah because Jesus Christ is the truth. That's why in John chapter 14, 6 he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. So he is the unleavened bread. The Bible that we have, it is the unleavened bread. 
So when we read it, our life will change if you uh, believe. Because the Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you seek him uh, and when you every day read this word, it's like eating and drinking, uh, drinking water, eating food. So when you read it, when you are reading the word, uh, it, uh, it uh, points out to uh, in a spiritual way that you are uh, uh, reading the word and it is eating the word of God. So we must always have the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now we will move forward for the four offerings that are there. One is the sin offering, second is the burnt offering, third is the wave offering and fourth is the eve offering. So these four uh, offerings are also there along with uh, two animal sacrifices. Uh, this offering, uh, first is sin offering. Now you can go through the Old Testament but uh, when we look at the New Testament, uh, the sin offering, uh, it is mentioned in Hebrew chapter 10, 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So that is the Messiah. That uh, one sacrifice, because in the Old Testament, every time there is a sacrifice, they have to do that. But here, once for all, Jesus Christ, once he went on the cross of Calvary, through that one sacrifice for sins, uh, he has offered himself and forgave all the sins of the people and now uh, he is sitting on the right hand of God. So that's what the scripture uh, Hebrew 10 12 says about sin offering. So he became the sin offering. Now we move further, there is a burnt offering. Now again uh, Hebrew chapter 10 verse 10 says, by the which uh, we, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So he gave his body on the cross of Calvary and that body was sacrificed like how in the Old Testament the animal was sacrificed in the same way Jesus Christ sacrificed his body and uh, through that offering he has sanctified us once for all. So therefore uh, this is all about sin offering and burnt offering. Then there is a wave offering. Uh, now this is all linked to the animal sacrifices. Now the wave offering that speaks about is resurrection uh, because uh, they have to take uh, Bible says uh, the breast of the wave offering uh, that is of the animal and they have to wave it. Now that all speaks about waving always in the Bible speaks about is resurrection uh, that you can also see uh, in the book of Leviticus also. Now that is uh, wave offering and the fourth one is a uh, heave offering, that is an offering that has to be exalted. It's called an offering of exaltation, exalting him. Uh, now that is uh, the shoulder part of the animal has to be taken and exalted. Now that is the same thing in uh, Psalms 99 verse 5 says, Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool for he is holy. So God is holy. Now this all uh, you see that uh, the consecration uh, was for holiness. Uh, that's why God said, this are the way uh, the priest has to be uh, uh, made holy or consecrated. So first we saw that it was with water, then we saw it was with oil, then it is what it was with blood and bread. Uh, they need to be sanctified. Uh, and we have seen the two animal sacrifices. Uh, one is bullock and then there is a ram which is a male sheep. Then we saw four offerings, the sin offering, the burnt offering, the wave offering and the heave offering. So these are the uh, things through which uh, the priest is uh, made holy. So all these three things together make that priest holy uh, for the priest's office. So when you officiate as a high priest uh, in the priest office, then this has to be uh, followed thoroughly uh, according to the scriptures. So first they need to be washed with water, then anointed with oil, then uh, two animal sacrifices and four offerings. 
all these things that we have seen, that's how uh, the priest is consecrated or ordained for the priest office. Now we come to the third subtopic, uh, that is in the New Testament we see Yeshua is the high priest. Because when you read the Old Testament, all that you read in the Old Testament points out to the Messiah. So in every uh, page that you read in the Old Testament, you must be able to see the Messiah. That's why everything in the Old Testament is fulfilled or complete in Christ Jesus. That's what you need to see whenever you read the Old Testament. If you don't see it, then you will not enjoy the Old Testament. That's the reason many people don't read the Old Testament because uh, they say it is all completed work, nothing is there. But there is a beauty in it. You will be able to see the Messiah better uh, through the Old Testament. That's why uh, I say that everything is complete uh, in the Old Testament through the Messiah. Now as we see the third subtopic, Yahshua is the High Priest in the New Testament. Uh, now we will see some scriptures. As I said that uh, the book of Hebrews, Paul uh, writes many uh, things about the high priest. Uh, Paul had a lot of revelation. Uh, he was a man with abundance of revelation. Uh, so God used him uh, to write many things about the high priest uh, in the book of Hebrews. As I said, 18 times uh, high priest is mentioned in the book of Hebrews, out of which 12 times it is pertaining to the Messiah. So, uh, we will see some scriptures about the high priest. To see first the book of Hebrew, chapter 3, verse 1 says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So, Jesus Christ is our high priest in the uh, New Testament. What Aaron was doing in the Old Testament as a high priest, the same thing was completed by Christ Jesus in the New Testament that he became our uh, uh, high priest uh, in the New Testament. So this is the scripture it says, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. As we move further, uh, some more scriptures, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Uh, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. So he says that Jesus Christ is the great high priest. Now he has, he says he is passed into the heavens. So he is above all the heavens and that uh, the person is uh, Jesus, the Son of God. So therefore it says let us uh, hold fast our profession because he is our high priest. Now further some more scriptures, Hebrew chapter 5 verse 8 to 10 it says, though we have, we, uh, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So when we suffer, we also uh, become more obedient. So suffering is part of uh, the ministry. Uh, Jesus Christ himself suffered. Uh, for the obedience and being made perfect. So he made being perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now Melchizedek was an high priest and he was uh, like the son of God without father, without mother. You read in Hebrew chapter 7 about Melchizedek it is mentioned. So Jesus Christ was also after the order of Melchizedek because Melchizedek also had no father, no mother. Uh, he was like son of God. Therefore, uh, you see that uh, Jesus Christ was also uh, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek because Melchizedek uh, in the Old Testament met Abraham and Abraham gave type of all that he uh, received to Melchizedek and Melchizedek received it. Uh, so you read all these details, so uh, he was also a priest, Melchizedek was a priest and he was also a king of Salem, all the things that you read in the book of uh, Hebrew chapter 7. So Jesus Christ was an high priest after the order of Melchizedek, uh, he came as a son, God doesn't have a son, 
but he came as a son to die for the sins of the whole world god doesn't have a son but he became a son only to die for our sins so that through that suffering he may become perfect and the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him some more scriptures nebrew chapter 7 verse 26 and 27 says for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the for the people's for this he did once when he offered up himself so in the old testament Aaron the high priest uh, in the tabernacle every year he has to go and offer it, uh, for his own sins uh, and for the sins of the people he need to do a sacrifice uh, but in the new testament uh, jesus christ who became our high priest he offered up once himself on the cross of calvary uh, that uh, for his uh, for our sins because he was a holy god that's why here in the new testament uh, for our sins he paid the price once on the cross of calvary that's what hebrew chapter 7 26 27 says further some more scriptures uh, when we read hebrew chapter 9 Uh, verse 11 and 12 it says but Christ being come an high priest of good things to come so he is an high priest of good things to come by a greater greater and more perfect tabernacle so jesus christ was a perfect tabernacle because in the tabernacle of the old testament uh, there was uh, uh, some uh, things which were not right because the lot of uh, diverse things were there uh paul is mentioning that in the book of hebrews when you read uh, hebrew chapter 9 uh it says that uh, whatever services that was being done there could not make anybody perfect so perfection was lacking that's why today we have a perfect tabernacle which is yashua the messiah and uh, that is not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us so here in the new testament uh, what Aaron was doing it for uh, years together jesus christ once for all uh, did a great job on the cross of calvary and he paid the price uh, by shedding his own blood on the cross of calvary not with the blood of goats and calves that you see in the old testament so therefore uh, he is an high priest uh, uh, of good things to come so jesus christ is an high priest of good things to come so that's why uh, he obtained for us eternal redemption for us that's why we need to always thank god that he paid the price for us uh, in the new testament uh, that's why we need to always thank god uh, further uh, again in the book of hebrew chapter 10 Uh, when you read 19 to 22 here it says having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of yeshua by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us see jesus christ has consecrated for us as aaron was consecrated in the new testament he was also consecrated uh, for us through the way that is to say his flesh uh, and having an high priest Uh, or the house of god let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from every evil conscience and our bodies washed with uh, pure blood so therefore here it says uh, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the way that is to say is flesh and having a an high priest over the house of god that is our topic today having an high priest over the house of god so we all belong to the house of god we have an high priest uh jesus christ and uh, he is the one uh, who paid the price for us and redeemed us from sin sickness darkness death and all kind of evil things and that's why he says uh, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from 
an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water so let us draw near to him uh, with a true heart because he has given us a new and a living way which he has consecrated for us as Aaron was consecrated in the New Testament Yahshua the Messiah is also uh, consecrated for us so through his baptism and through receiving of the Holy Spirit and through his own sacrifices uh, what uh, the way uh, Aaron was consecrated Jesus Christ also consecrated for us uh, that he may pay the price for us so all that Aaron has been, done it Yahshua the Messiah fulfilled it in the New Testament and that's why we have an high priest over the house of God the house of God is a church is a group of believers who believe and uh, uh, we have an high priest that is Yahshua the Messiah who uh, takes care of us uh, through the word that he has given us that's why how the Old Testament is very beautiful uh, we get a clarity uh, in the New Testament through the life of Jesus Christ because everything what you read in the Old Testament is fulfilled in Yahshua the Messiah so uh, this is the message that I preached and these three subtopics the high priest Aaron the three ways of consecration and Yahshua who is also the high priest so these are the three subtopic we have seen and uh, may the good Lord bless you and make you understand uh, that we have a high priest uh, which is the Messiah who paid the price for us and uh, therefore we need to thank him and honor him all the days of our life because he paid the price for us so we need not do all the rituals that we see in the Old Testament because Christ fulfilled it in the New Testament for you and for me and that's why we need to always honor him and glorify his great name so he is the one who will sanctify and he is the one who will anoint and he is the one who will consecrate you also and that's why he has given us the word and through the reading of the word and through the power of the Holy Ghost he will also sanctify you that you may uh, walk in his ways the rest of the days of your life so before we close the word let's pray for all those who may be sick uh, in worries and tensions and anxieties or whatever be their problem, let's pray for them as that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Almighty God, everlasting Father, thank you for the word that you gave us to minister about Aaron the high priest and we saw Yashua the Messiah, our high priest in the New Testament and uh, he is the high priest uh, of the house of God Lord we thank you for all the understanding that you give us and we saw how your Aaron was consecrated in the Old Testament and how Yahshua the Messiah also was consecrated for us and for our sins Lord we thank you for all the understanding that you gave us Lord God Almighty in this time we especially pray for all those uh, who may be sick in worries and tensions and anxieties what will be their problem God we pray in the name of Yahshua the Messiah Lord heal them Ask them and heal them, forgive all their sins, shortcoming, failures and wrongs. Wash them, cleanse them, throw the precious blood of Yahshua the Messiah. Make their life holy, clean and accepted in thy sight. Increase their faith, forgive their sins and bless them. Give them courage and strength to withstand all the watch devil, that they may honor thee, praise and worship thee, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. By all parts of darkness, none of those evil forces may have power. That your great name be exalted, Lord. Commit everything to the hand. For we ask all these things in the blessed, sweet, holy, in the excellent name of our Lord and Saviour, Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. So once again, thank you very much for hearing the word. May the good Lord bless you. And uh, you can see all the earlier videos also, different messages, uh, doctrinal subjects, all those things that you can read, uh, see it, understand it, believe it, follow it, that we may be worthy to stand till his coming. So may the good Lord bless you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord.